Hey guys, did you know that I have a Patreon where you can support me and plus get awesome rewards? Or if you're thinking to yourself, but Julian, I want even more bang for my buck while still supporting you, you can pop over to my Redbubble and check out my awesome store with new designs appearing regularly. But for now, enjoy the video you're about to watch. Tis I, Julian Greystoke. Today I'm wearing my Slytherin shirt, but hey, I'm also wearing this little calcifer necklace. Can you see him? Isn't that just the cutest thing you've ever seen in your life? But you know what the Slytherin shirt means, and I don't think calcifer can save it. We are here with another read random review. This one of Beneath the Sugar Sky. For those of you who don't know, this is the third novella in a sort of companion series that are about portal worlds, like Narnia or Wonderland. It's been a hot minute since I read this book. This review kind of got lost in this notebook amongst a bunch of other reviews and I just like found it, so I apologize if I don't remember this book very well, I'm just going by my notes. I'm just gonna read the synopsis off of Goodreads because I don't remember. Why won't you? There we go. Beneath the Sugar Sky returns to Eleanor West's home for wayward children. At this magical boarding school, children who have experienced fantasy adventures are reintroduced into the real world. Sumi died years before her prophesied daughter, Rini, could be born. Rini was born anyway, and now she's trying to bring her mother back from a world without magic. That was a confusing synopsis, and I kind of remember that. <laughs> This is, this is why I should not do these reviews so long after I read the book. Some of you may know that I felt eh about pretty much every book in this series so far. So how do I feel about this one? Eh. For whatever reason, these books just really don't speak to me. But let's try to figure out why this one didn't. I will say that Cade, who is my favorite character, was in this book, which is good. Points for that, but he was used very little, so... Uh, points taken away again. Don't promise me Cade and then snatch him away. All of the other characters were really unengaging to me. There was just no one that I wanted to follow that I was excited to adventure with. One of the reasons that I do like Cade and he is my favorite character is that his personal struggles and backstory aren't shoved in my face as some kind of moral lesson, which unfortunately is what happens in most of these books, where we focus on one or two characters and their struggles are just sort of overtly thrown in your lap to teach you a lesson, a valuable lesson. This book's lesson was don't bully. Bullying is bad. Thanks. I wish it would have been subtle about it, but this book doesn't know how to subtle. The writing itself is arguably more solid in this book, which is pretty normal. Writers tend to get better as they go, just like anybody else who practices anything. However, she still does not trust you to understand things by yourself, and just has to explain things at length. And it's just like, explain it briefly and then let me go. We have a story to get to, I assume. Speaking of story, this book had more story to it than the other two books, which tend to be a bit meandery and are kind of more about the lesson you're supposed to get than they are about an actual like story with a beginning, middle, and end. This one was the most like a story with a beginning, middle, and end. But of course, the story was meandering and random as fuck. Now, I think that maybe it was trying to be because it was trying to feel like Wizard of Oz, and I don't know if any of you have read the original Wizard of Oz, but it is also meandering and random as fuck. So maybe if I want to give the author credit, she was trying for that. Unfortunately to me, uh, to quote myself here, it read like the work of an inexperienced pantser. It flopped from improbable plot point to improbable plot point. And the final thing I mentioned was, if you recall in the first book, I mentioned that it shat all over the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe for some reason. But then apparently in this book, going through wardrobes was mentioned at the beginning, which made me wonder, are we back to being okay with the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Is maybe the author like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have shat all over just that one portal fantasy story because I didn't agree with like the theology in it? I don't know. I don't know, maybe. But yeah, that's my really short 
review, I mean it's a short book, of Beneath the Sugar Sky. I don't even know if I'm going to continue the series. I keep hoping for Cade's book because Cade is the most interesting character to me, but then again I almost don't want him to have his own book because then he will get some sort of very aggressive moral lesson shoved in my face and I don't want that. I like him the way he is. But what did you think? Did you read any of these books? Especially, did you read Beneath the Sugar Sky? What did you think about it? Comment below and let me know. As all of you know, I post new videos here Mondays and Fridays. All the links to my social media are in the doobly-doo for ease of clicking. And if you liked what you saw here but wish it was higher quality, you can support me on Patreon, where I am saving up for a camera that's not 10 years old. And I will see all of you again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye! What's up everybody? It is shout out time. Time to shout out to my very first patron, Kim. And if you want to be cool like Kim, become a patron over on Patreon.